What's the word, y'all? We back with another article reaction. Two videos in less than like 20 hours, man. I'm on the grind. I mean, it's not a good thing, though. I'm gonna let you in on a little YouTuber secret. Uploading two videos in the 24-hour span is actually pretty bad for the channel and the growth of it. So this might bite me in the butt. So leave a like on the video and subscribe if you are new. Uh, I've been doing a lot of post-game reactions to the NBA Finals and stuff. And, of course, coming in to read these articles that are related to trades because I'm the biggest internet general manager. Would never be able to do it in real life. But grading other people's trades is something I do often. So be sure to leave a like. Uh, trades that will shock every NBA fan base is from Greg Schwartz uh, from Bleach Report. So shout out to him. Uh, I'm going to say this right off rip. He is not saying that these are trades that can potentially happen, but interesting trades that can shock you. So I'm looking for shock value. And seeing these two players together means that he has James Harden getting traded to Philly for Josh Richardson and some other pieces. That would, that would definitely shock you. And I think it's one for every team. Yeah, it's one for every team. So... Everybody eats in today's video. The Atlanta Hawks somehow get Giannis, giving up John Collins, Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, uh, Dwayne Dedman in the sixth overall pick. Sure. Trey Young and Giannis together? You still have Clint Capella? You still have Kevin Herter? You know, you're going to have some shooting around him. But it's like Milwaukee. Are we going to trade two-time NBA, uh, NBA, not all-star, NBA MVP for like some good young guys, do not get me wrong, in the sixth overall pick. This is like a hard reset in Milwaukee. And I'm sure all Milwaukee fans would hate that because I feel like Milwaukee has hit the reset button a thousand times in their existence and only been like contenders for like a handful of years. So it would be hard for a Milwaukee Bucks fan to hit the reset again after having a two-time MVP and being a, a, a pretty good team. But that's interesting. That's an interesting value for MVP Giannis on the last year of his deal too. Keep that in mind. Then we have the Boston Celtics get a DeJounte Murray, LaMarcus Aldridge, and the 11th overall pick for Kimball Walker. Okay, Greg, I'm not saying your trades are good, but if shock value is what you're going for, you got it right here. The Boston Celtics trading away uh, all-star starter Kimball Walker. Kimball's a good player, all-star caliber player, um, but probably not anything more than that. There was a lot of times this season in the playoffs where he was their third best player behind Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. And in this trade, you get a little bit more defense, not a little bit more defense, you get a better defensively, and you get younger. De DeJounte Murray definitely would fit the growing up with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown timeline. Um, and for somehow, they always end up having LaMarcus Aldridge end up in Boston. And again, I just don't like the fit of LaMarcus in Boston. Personally, the Spurs, I don't see why the Spurs trade their young up-and-coming guard for an older guard, even though the older guard is you know obviously better. They're a team that should also be hitting that button. That button we just talked about with the Bucks. if Giannis walked into the office, they should also be hitting that button. And trading away, DeJounte Murray is not hitting that button. He's one of the pieces you should be thinking about keeping. Next, the Brooklyn Nets, Chris Paul. Uh, this wouldn't be... I mean, actually, this would shock me. <laughs> Spencer did what he... Torian Prince, uh, DeAndre Jordan, 19th overall pick. First of all, DeAndre Jordan is, is virtually untouchable uh, because he's very good friends with Kevin Durant and Kyrie. And you don't want to piss off your best two players. But having Kyrie and Chris Paul in the same team would be something to see. Um, three very great point guards in that locker room with Chris Paul, Kyrie, and Steve Nash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, would they be able to make it work? Sure. Great players usually make it work to some extent. But, like, nah. I think they'd probably rather have a better wing than having another ball-dominant guard. Even though, again, we've seen Chris Paul play off-ball a lot the last couple seasons. Charlotte Hornets trade up to the first overall pick, giving up number three. No, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, the Charlotte Hornets trade up. They give up number three, and they give up a 2020 lottery protected pick. Um, Okay. Then would that shock me? No. I don't. No, that's not too shocking. I mean, we see people trade up from three to one all the time. We saw it with Jason Tatum and Markel Fultz, right? So that wouldn't be too super shocking. The the Bulls getting Drew Holiday would be shocking. So it's Drew Holiday, Josh Hart, the 13th overall pick is what we're getting. We're giving up Kobe, OP, and the fourth overall pick. Um, uh, Drew Holiday is obviously a very good player, and I'm a big fan, a fan of Drew Holiday. Again, him and Mike Holiday are two of the only players in the league that have one of those jersey shirts of. So I'm a big fan of Drew Holiday. I don't know if I would trade this for him for this current Chicago Bulls team. Right, so we trade for Drew Holiday. What does that get us? You know? Did that get us to a playoff contention team? Sure, contention for sure. Playoff contention for sure. But probably not much more than that. I would much rather keep Kobe White for now and allow him to grow 
and turn that fourth overall pick into something else, personally. As But I don't speak for all Bulls fans. Some Bulls fans may see this and be super excited. Because I know that the consent, there's no consensus on Kobe White. There are Bulls fans that really absolutely love him, like me. And I also know Bulls fans that think he's like Alonzo Trier. So some Bulls fans may see this and enjoy this trade package. Personally, I would say no. Then we have the Cleveland Cavaliers getting Bradley Beal. But for what? So you'd have Bradley Beal, Kevin Love, and Drummond? I mean, yeah, you're probably a playoff team for sure. But like, you know? But Okay, let's see what they get back. So Bradley Beal, ninth overall pick, goes to Cleveland. Then you get Colin Sexton, Darius Garland, the whole farm. Colin Sexton, Darius Garland, Jetty Osmond, Dante Exum, fifth overall pick, and another pick from Milwaukee that is top 10 protected. They give it up the whole farm for a team to be good enough to make the playoffs and maybe make the second round. Maybe make the second round. While the Wizards, of course, this would be hitting the reset. You get two guards where you already have John Wall coming back. I talked to John Wall yesterday, Lil Flex, and he told me he is 120% healthy. I don't want to tell him that's impossible, but I'm happy to hear that he's he's healthy. And he said he's going to be better than ever. But, of course, that's something that players are going to say. But he felt like, you know what I'm saying? It, it, he gave the vibe that he meant it, um, but we'll see. So if he feels that he's going to be 100%, I would say that we're keeping Bradley Beal for at least another half a season to see how him and John Wall play together. Another thing that John Wall told me as we go to the next one, and I probably shouldn't be spoiling this because it's, it's spoiling my show. What? Who cares? Um, he told me that he has no intention of taking shots away from, from Bradley Beal. So expect Bradley Beal to have another 28, 29, 30 point per game season next year. He's just going to facilitate. Cool. Cool idea. So then we have Marcus Smart going to the Dallas Mavericks. And I mean, I like the fit of that, but why would Boston trade it away? Let's see what they get back. Maxi Kleba, Seth Curry, and the 31st overall pick. So second round, first pick. Um, For the Boston Celtics, I don't, I mean, I believe that Marcus Smart is just like so much of the heart associated with the team that he is as, as important as a guy like Kemba. Obviously, Kemba is a very better NBA player but like the heart the defense the guard all positions aspect of Marcus Smart I would personally keep him on the team rather than trading him for obviously this is more shooting for the team that's maybe what they're going for but Marcus Smart over the last couple seasons have improved his jump shot significantly uh, enough that I feel confident with him being on the floor regardless of the situation if we're down by three I'm cool with Marcus Smart being on the floor because I can trust him taking that shot as well uh, but obviously Seth Curry's like the greatest three-point shooter of all time so uh, Denver Nuggets get Blake Griffin in the second round pick for 2021 that, uh, from the Lakers for Gary Harris and Will Barton. This is interesting. And the reason this is interesting because there's two tales of Blake Griffin, right? There's a Blake Griffin from two years ago where he was an All-NBA player. He put Detroit Pistons on his back and made the playoffs, which is fire. And then you had last year's Brooke, uh, Brooke, I almost said Brooke Lopez, Blake Griffin, where he was not good whatsoever when he was healthy. Like, like, go look at his shooting splits. Go look at his games. He just was not very good last season. So you'd be taking a gamble trying to get two years ago, Blake Griffin. But the package you are giving up is not anything of crazy significance at the end of the day. I'm guessing that this means that you're letting Paul Millsap walk because Blake Griffin has one of the biggest contracts in the league. And maybe even letting Jerry and Grant walk. And if that's the case, then maybe I don't do this deal. But Gary Harris is cool. He's an elite defender. But not much more than that. Will Barton is good. I like Will Barton, but you saw how far they were without him. So you can make the argument that, boom, you can slide Michael Porter Jr. over to the three. Blake Griffin, Jokic. I don't know who's playing the two for you. Uh, I don't know who's playing the two for you, but you make that work. Jamal Murray. and I like I like the idea of this trade. If if we believe that we can get back to that Blake Griffin, mwah, that'd be beautiful. Um, don't hate this trade. I don't hate this trade. And if the Detroit Pistons are looking to get off Blake Griffin's money, uh, you get a guy who's like 26 years old and Gary Harris, who potentially could have a restart to his offensive career in, in Detroit. And then Will Barton, again, like I mentioned, is a good player. I don't hate this trade. I don't hate this trade. The Pistons, oh. Oh, no, I hate this one, though. I hate this one, though. Yeah, I hate this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I really hate this one. Um, From from my perspective, from a Chicago Bulls fan, seventh overall pick, Luke Kennard and Tony Snell. No, thank you. Um, but from the Detroit Pistons, you adding him, uh, trying to get into playoff contention with hopefully a good Blake again in this hypothetical situation. This is the only trade they do with the healthy Blake, uh, Seku year number two, <laughs> uh, Derrick Rose and Zach Levine. I, I pass. Warriors. 
Oh, this is an interesting story. Okay, so the Warriors get Al Horford, who again, I'm not sold that on the idea that Al Horford is washed now. I do, I do think there's a lot still in the tank for Al Horford. I just think that he had a terrible fit in Philly. Um, some picks that are second rounders for Wiggins, straight up. I know Philly fans want to get rid of the Al Horford contract, but do you want to take on the Wiggins contract in exchange for it? We already have a team on Philly that have a few players that uh, you question their motor and Wiggins would fit right alongside that. Do you want another guy you want to question their motor? Ugh, you know, I do like the idea of the Warriors getting Al Horford because I think he would fit with what they try to do over there. But I don't know if Philly is giving up <laughs> as much as you want to trade Al Horford's contract. I don't know if you're doing that for Wiggins' contract and his maybe lack of drive. Let's see. With the Houston Rockets, Draymond Green is coming to the team for Robert Covington, Daniel House. Hey, I think the Warriors say yes to this deal. Robert Covington is really good. Daniel House is a very good role player. And Draymond Green is cool. You know what I'm saying? I think the Warriors would say yes to this unless you're like, okay, we need his heart. We need all that stuff that Draymond brings. I love Draymond the analyst. Um, and speaking of Draymond, my episode with Draymond Green comes out on Friday. So be looking out for that. He was a good person to talk to. Um, this would, sh this, if you're talking about shocking people, it would because you would look at Draymond to be like a, a Warriors lifer. Pacers, whoa, Russell Westbrook and Indy? Russell Westbrook and P.J. Tucker, they classified him as a power forward, but we know that he is a center. <laughs> Maybe just in Houston. For Malcolm Brogdon, Miles Turner, and Doug McDermott, honestly, who would win this deal? Maybe the Rockets, right? As far as fit goes, that's, that's what I'm looking at. And not one for one, Russell Westbrook versus Malcolm Brogdon, but fit-wise, you have a rim protecting center that can stretch the floor. You don't have to go ultra small ball anymore with Miles Turner. You have shooting, great perimeter shooting, and Doug McDermott. And you have a guy that can play on and off the ball that was just 50, 40, 90 a few years ago, and Malcolm Brogdon. I think those three pieces fit better with Houston, hit fit better with Houston and James Harden than maybe Russell Westbrook does. Um, Russell Westbrook and in Indiana would be cool. I would be willing to take that drive to Indiana to watch him play a few times a season, so that would be cool. Um, I don't think they do this deal, though. I don't think they do this deal. Moving on. The Clippers. Paul George for Joel Embiid and Josh Richardson. Eh, I, I don't think Philly fans would like this whatsoever. We talked about Joel Embiid, who you could argue is the best center in the league. Uh, I would probably put him at number two. But you, if you had an argument and said telling me he's number one to you, I'm not going to say you're wrong either. Like, I would have him number two. But if you say he was number one, I'd be like, okay, cool. Um, for Paul George, who's good. Um, he has his woes though, especially when we come to the, to the big light moments. I don't do this deal if I'm Philly. I don't, I don't do this deal if I'm Philly. If I'm the Clippers, yeah, Montrezl Harrell's going to have to walk. I would do that deal if I'm, I'm the Clippers, but I don't think the 76ers would do that. But again, when I'm doing these articles, I want your, as a fan of whatever team we're talking about, let me know what you think about them too, because it's not all about what I think. I want to hear you because you're the one watching them 82 times a, 82 times a season. I don't know why I just drew a blank. 82 times a season. Um, 80, 80 plus times a season. Kevin Love gets back with LeBron. Danny Gray, Catavius Caldwell, Pope, and JaVale McGee. That's like no value for uh, the Cavaliers. And I think they'd probably rather keep Kevin Love on the roster then trade them for no value at the end of the day. Because this doesn't help your rebuild, and it doesn't help you win now. So I would say no to that if I'm the Cavs. The Grizzlies get Drummond? Hmm, who's a better player right now? Jonas Valanciunas or Andre Drummond? You let me know in the comment section down below. Miami Heat. Car oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Car Anthony now we talking about shocking the, t shocking the world. Car Anthony Towns for Bam Adebayo, Kendrick Nunn, and Andre Iguodala. Whoa. Um, as much as I do love me some Bam out of Bayou, and y'all know I love me some Bam out of Bayou, Car Anthony Towns has like the potential to be the best offensive center in a very, very long time. As far as well roundedness on the offensive side of the ball, there's nobody better than Car Anthony Towns. He has everything in his bag offensively. But you can make the argument for Bam out of Bayou's superior defense, playmaking, ability to guard the perimeter, all those things Bam out of Bayou beat him on. Oh, this is one that I want to see the fans say. Minnesota fans, Miami fans, let me know. 
two all-star caliber centers. And Kendrick Nunn is cool. Iggy's big old contract. Hmm. Jimmy Butler and Carl Anthony Towns, bro. First of all, wait, we've seen that before. We've seen that before and it didn't work out. Pass. Milwaukee Bucks get Chris Middleton a seat for CJ. I've seen this trade a bunch of times. I don't know um, who benefits more from if anybody benefit at all. Minnesota Timberwolves, Devin Booker. This is what people wanted to see. You remember the Slam article, the Slam magazine with D'Angelo Russell, D-Book, and Cat all together? Here's the trade. First overall pick, 17th overall pick, another first, Jared Cover, Josh Okogie, and James Johnson. But the problem is the Suns were so good in the bubble, you cannot convince their fans to trade Devin Booker without giving him another full season to potentially make the playoffs. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And I feel like he's found a home there. So, no. Pelis and ben, ooh, ben Simmons and Zion on the court together. Now, that would be fun in the full court, but in the half court, we may have some trouble. Ben Simmons and Hal Horford for Drew Holiday back to Philly. Lonzo, J.J. Redick back to Philly. Nikhil Alexander-Walker and some picks associated with it. Ooh, Drew Holiday and Lonzo with Joel, J.J. Joel and J.J.'s PNRs were crazy. They were amazing. Um, efficient, amazing efficient too. They're like the stats say that as well. So bringing them back would be cool. And I think it was just recently J.J. Redick had said in this podcast, like they made a big mistake by not bringing me back. It's a fact. They need that. Next. <laughs> uh, RJ, you trading RJ already? The third overall pick, you trading them to get up to the one? Um, oh, when you do this, you keep your pick. I don't think the Knicks trade RJ just yet. I, I, I'm not giving up on RJ off the one season with the New York Knicks, bro. I don't understand it. I don't, I don't understand why I see so many trade rumors and offers about him. After one season, sure, he didn't have the most efficient season. Sure, defensively, he was not very good. But it was his rookie seat. How many rookie guards slash wing players have we seen coming into it? High praise. Don't play well their first season. You're number three. You're number four. They're, they're a good player. It happens all the time. And we're talking about New York who had no shot creation. He had to be that. I'm not giving up on him just yet. OKC gets the Montes a bonus back for Gallinari via sign and trade, the 25th overall pick. Another first round pick from the Clippers. Uh, <laughs> look how young he This was just a couple seasons ago, but he looks so much younger then than he does now. So much younger. Um, with this, this would definitely shock me. It would probably make him upset to go back to OKC, uh, mostly based on the fact that they gave up on him after a season. Literally, after his rookie season, they gave up on him. Um, not really gave up on him because they got Paul George a return, and I think you probably make that trade more times than not. They definitely didn't expect this guy to turn into an all-star caliber player. But for Gallinari, some and was that three, two first round picks, two first round picks. Um, any fans? I don't know where to where to have Indiana right now because there's so many rumors going on with Victor Oladipo, Miles Turner. I don't know what they would be looking for as an organization, especially since they don't even have a coach yet. When you have a coach, you can start to make trades and build around what that coach's scheme is or vice versa. I guess you hire a coach that fit what you have. So I don't know what pieces should be on the table for y'all, who's untouchable. So let me know in that comment section below as well. Darren Fox, Nemanja Bialica, Markel Fultz, Mo Bamba in the 50. You could not convince the Kings fans who have been this close to making the playoffs two years in a row to go backwards. You can't. It's the longest drought in the NBA when it comes to the playoffs. You can't tell them this future all-star caliber point guard, De'Aaron Fox, we're trading away for Markel Fultz, who still, even though he had a good season for him, he's still a project at the moment. And Mo Bamba, still a project at the moment. And the fence, I can't, you cannot tell Kings fans that. No. The only reason you do this trade is if you're convinced that you don't want to pay De'Aaron Fox max money because he's going to want max money. And there's the trade that was a part of like the, the thumbnail of the video, James Harden for Joel Embiid and Josh Richardson. And Josh Richardson. Oh my God, I did not expect and Josh Richardson. Joel and Josh Richardson. And the pick. And the pick. Um, Doc Rivers said he is very excited to coach Joel and Ben Simmons. He said he'd be crazy to pass that up. And he had praised that dynamic duo before he even signed with them like years ago. So I think uh, Elden Brand and company wouldn't be looking to make a you know, dramatic trade like this. I understand these trade rumors when it was the idea was bringing Mike D'Antoni to Philly. But now that they have their coach and Doc who already expressed that he wants to coach both of these guys, um, I don't think you trade either of them. They've been playing on the Brett Brown for a thousand years. So now they have a better coach. Uh, Kelly Oubre for the second overall pick and the 10th overall pick. I like that exchange. Kelly Oubre, I think he fits with what the Warriors will want to do. I've seen this trade before. I think this is a good deal. 
um, for both sides, honestly. I mean, you saw the Phoenix Suns play really good without Kelly Oubre, and he might be the odd man out because uh, Cam Reddish and Mikael Bridges played so well. Next, the Portland Trail Blazers, they get the, they get the gang back together. Uh, sure, if I'm the Portland Trail Blazers, i do this trade. Zach Kyle is a good future piece, I think, um, but the rest of these guys coming off a of Achilles injury, Trevor Reza wasn't very good and didn't travel to the bubble. I would do this trade to get them back together. Why not? For old time's sake, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Let's bring back Brandon Roy so we can finally see these three play together. <laughs> and they're pro okay. Brandon Roy would be out of his prime. Miles Turner for Bogdanovich sign and trade. Kings fans that will put you at Miles Turner with Marvin Bagley together, and the Indy fans you get another wing player. The Spurs get Bradley Beal, Derek White, Lonnie Walker, Keldon Johnson, Rudy Gay. I mean, that's a big package for Bradley Beal. And Derek White is a good player. Lonnie Walker, I, I really believe Lonnie Walker is going to be very good in this league. I do. I invested very highly on Lonnie Walker. Keldon Johnson had very good bright spots this season. Um, but again, this is contingent on the Bradley Beal wanting out. And the package is not bad whatsoever. But it's probably not the best you can get. The Toronto Raptors, Cal Lowry to the Heat. For I've seen this trade before on Twitter too. Cal Lowry for Kendrick Nunn, Iggy. Kelly Olenek, this would be a huge step back for the Toronto Raptors, obviously. Um, and the only piece that you got for if you're going to rebuilding is Kendrick Nunn, because Iggy's older. <sighs> I mean, if you want to bring back Freddie, is that what they're trying to say? Freddie's lead name is not even mentioned in here. So this would be like, hey, we're letting Marcus Saul walk. We're letting Serge walk. And we're going to have OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, and Kendrick Nunn? Utah, Victor Oladipo going to Utah would be amazing for them. I think I think Utah fans would be okay with giving up Mike Conley. Joe Ingles is a fan favorite around there for sure, so giving him up may be hard for the heart. Um, I think this trade is not bad. Again, they keep throwing these trades with Victor Oladipo and Jeremy Lamb together, and both of them are coming to like really significant injuries. So like, if you trade for both of them, it feels like one of them is not going to pan out the way you want. It just feels like that way. Um, but... I, uh, I don't do this deal if I'm either of the teams, honestly. Like, honestly, Mike Conley last year of his deal, Joe Ingles, one and a half year left of his deal. Older, you're talking about 34-year-old Mike Conley, maybe not that, and Joe Ingles is plus 30 as well. Ah, that, don't, that doesn't make you better. It won't make you better. And then lastly, John Wall for Al Horford, for Mike Scott and Zaire Smith. John Wall and... Ben Simmons on the same team? Nah. I would say hard pass to that. Uh, shout out to Greg Schwartz again, man. Talking about shocked fan bases. Yes. A lot of the teams in this will be very shocked. And maybe that's because they think they're getting fleeced or vice versa. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Let me know about all the trades in the comment section, of course. I'll be reading those things. All right? I'm out.